Hey, faithful subscribers or random surfers of cyberspace, this is Chubbs back at last with a new video. I'm sorry that I haven't been around so much recently. I've had a couple of minor, well actually not so minor setbacks, which I will probably get into in another video. This is about fluoride. It's going to be along similar lines to the last one. And I know if you're tuning into my channel, you probably know very well that fluoride is basically just poison. But I have some anecdotal evidence of my own, which I think you'll find pretty interesting. And I know we've had it drummed into us for most of our lives that anecdotal evidence is worthless. But I beg to differ. Basically, discarding anecdotal evidence is teaching us not to trust our own senses again. And I'm here to tell you that you should be trusting yourself and your own senses more than anything else. So let's get to it. Basically, I've been trying to keep fluoride out of my mouth and out of my system. And I'm a bit slack, so I haven't always done so well when it comes to drinking water. And Wellington, New Zealand tap water is fluoridated, unfortunately. But I have been doing very well in keeping my toothpaste unfluoridated. So, having done that for maybe four years, I went to the dentist for the first time in, I don't know, probably a decade. And the first couple of times, they applied what they call their mineralization paste. The first time after it, I was sick. I was feeling basically poisoned and had to take the rest of the day off work. I was feeling nauseous, no energy, just basically feeling like crap, you know, had to have a have a good bath and second time I had to go to the dentist three times because it was such a long time since I've been you know I had quite a few fillings so second time they did it again they applied this mineralization paste but this time I actually asked them what it was and it turns out it's fluoride paste so once again I went home and I was sick and I had to take the rest of the day off but the next week when I went in, I demanded that they didn't put that crap in my mouth. And surprisingly enough, they didn't seem too surprised and they complied. Long story short, I was fine. I wasn't sick for the rest of the day. Managed to go to work and have a productive day. Other than, you know, I was drooling a bit and couldn't talk too good because of the numb mouth. So that seems pretty solid evidence to me that since I've gone for three, four years without using fluoridated toothpaste, and we know that fluoride is bioaccumulative, it slowly builds up in the system, that we accumulate the most fluoride from toothpaste, which makes perfect sense because, for example, we know that a lot of medications, um, it says on the box that you take it sublingually, which means you basically dissolve it under your tongue and the medication reaches your bloodstream via lymph nodes in your mouth. So the same applies to the fluoride in the toothpaste. And we know that on the label of most fluoridated toothpaste, it says that the toothpaste is a poison and if it's accidentally ingested to call poison control and see a doctor. So obviously there's fairly high levels of fluoride in fluoridated toothpaste and the average person who uses it every day, twice a day, three times a day, doesn't have the same problem that I did at the dentist because the levels of fluoride in their system which has accumulated over time is high enough that their body has gained a tolerance to it and the extra dose of fluoride in this mineralization gel crap is not such a shock to the body as it was to me. So, moral of the story, 
it's pretty damn hard especially living in a city, to completely eliminate fluoridated drinking water from your diet. But it's pretty easy just to stop buying fluoridated toothpaste, and it seems that that is what's going to make the biggest difference.